Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today to do some more work in my trifold junk journal. So, what are we covering today? I will show you how I measure and cut my papers to size for the backing. We'll do this simple pocket. We're doing the little journal that goes there. We're going to be doing the ephemera folio that goes there. And I will also be showing you how I attach each to the spine. So, onwards. So, let's crack on with it then. I'll take that off because, as you can see, I've not glued it on yet. I will be gluing it on with art glitter. You just need to leave it for a while when you use art glitter to glue fabric on uh, to dry properly. Uh, I didn't want to risk knocking it off because to cure properly, 100% takes about 24 hours. So, right, I've not done anything without you, but I have prepared lots. So, I'll pop that there for you to have a squint at measurements while I'm talking. I've made a little journal. I'm going to be using, well, I did want to use an elastic binding, but I don't have any cream elastic. I couldn't find my white elastic because I thought, oh, I could ink it up or coffee dye it. And then I thought, just use string. String will work. So we're going to use string. You can use elastic. I have ordered some cream elastic, but it'll be like end of June. And I don't think you can wait while end of June, can you, for me to finish this? So the journal. It is six and a half inches high. Yeah, that will allow me to put some holes in the spine and thread my string through without it causing to any damage to the top of the journal. You can always put a little bit of washi tape or clear tape on the corner or even all the way down edge if you're worried about that. So it's six and a half inches high and four and seven eighths of an inch wide. You could do it smaller. Don't do it any bigger. Well, you, could, you may be able to stretch it to five, but I didn't want to risk it, not even for a biscuit. So I've made mine an eighth of an inch uh, narrower than the piece of chipboard that we use for the back, yeah? Uh, I'll show you the papers I've put in it when I've talked about the backing papers. So my backing papers, I've cut mine to size and I've rounded off my corners. Which, which is which on them? One's a bit wider than other. So what's interesting with this is we're going to cut these backing papers to the same width as the chipboard that we're covering because we've got the gaps here. The gaps are made up with the creases for the spine plus the chipboard got a smidgen wider when we wrapped it in paper, didn't it? And then we put tape on it to strengthen it all up. So these, these are the sizes you want. I've wrote them down. So cut them all to six and three quarter inches high which is a quarter inch shorter than your chipboard but the width wants to be the exact same width so we've got one inch wide piece for that bigger spine so what no we haven't we've got a one and sixteenth inch piece for a bigger spine silly woman and a one inch piece for the smaller spine the center piece is five inches wide because the chipboard was. Now, I've not cut the other two because I'm going to be doing pockets. I've not decided what pockets to do on that one yet. We'll decide that together. But in this one, I'm just going to put one uh, side pocket. It's not a deep one because when we close the journal up, that pocket will go on top of that piece. So I don't want loads of chompy stuff there. It's not going to look right when it's closed. So I'm going to pop that there. That there, that there, that there. So I'm going to ink. I'm going to do a light inking, I've decided. And I've been very fortunate that this Graphic 45 paper hasn't, it hasn't uh, cracked when I've scored it. So I'm able to do a little cover for the journal with it. Uh, I'm not so lucky with my Precious Memories collection. It will, it looked like I'd just cut it with some really old scissors as soon as I scored it. I'm wondering, maybe I've been a bit harsh with Graphic 45, I don't know. Maybe that were a bad batch, I don't know. I'll see how I go when I use my others. But I've decided that my Graphic 45 collection is no longer being hoarded. I'm going to get it used. I mean, it is paper, isn't it? It does age. Although we're junk journals, we like old paper, don't we? <laughs> and the modern paper, when it's acid-free which the Graphic 45 is, and there's another thing, lig yeah, lignin, whatever that is, 
but apparently age it uh, when that's an ingredient in your paper it deteriorates it faster I don't know so yeah I'm just going to get used also I'm trying not to buy as much I should be able to get away with just buying little bits to go with what I can dig out of my stash one of my favourite channels to watch is the Posh Paper Lady. Uh, she does cards, all sorts of crafts, not just journals. And <laughs> she's done a video recently about just stop buying stuff and use up your stash. And I think it's, uh, yeah, it's resonated. She started this video off looking really fed up and, uh, and on a chin. And a giant stack of paper in front of her and I'm like, yep. Yeah, yeah, I've got that much paper. Granted, I've been collecting it for 20 years, but yeah, that's you'd have 20 pads, wouldn't you, if you bought one more than you needed every year for 20 years? And I've got a few more than 20. Right, so that's those inked. Uh, I'm going to stick them on with art glitter. It sticks nice to this tape. I don't know. I've never tried using my kalal glue with this tape i don't know how it would stick so i'm not going to risk it and today's new uh, phrase is not even for a biscuit no idea where i got that from do you know i used to say something like that when i was a kid let's risk it for a biscuit <laughs> don't know where it come from right i'm gonna do my spines first so i'll start with this one that's a nice blue on the other side isn't it do you know what i do this often me i think ooh. Ooh, ooh! No, it's too plain. <laughs> I like both sides of paper. It is a problem. Granted, it's a problem. I can't do straight. Look at that today. I obviously I'm not good at doing straight lines in midair. Wee, lordy, that's terrible. That's not quite flowing free either. I know I've had my pin in. Can you even find? Oh, there you are. Let's clear you out a bit. I'm not going to put you through watching me glue every one of these, Dan. I'll glue one spine and then I'm going to do exactly the same with that and that. Don't put it upside down, you daft woman. Right. Yeah, I also like to have a little bit of wiggle room. The other reason I'm not using my dry adhesive on this. Because it's all more of a bit of judgment on where to stick it. I find, you know when you've got wet glue, if you push from that end inwards, then when you're squidging those lines of glue near edge, Less squidges outwards, if that makes any sense whatsoever. It squidges towards middle. I'm going to call that straight enough. So, this one I've decided I haven't put any pockets on. Because that's going to be where your journal is. And, yeah. I don't want a pocket on that back one. We're going to have plenty of pockets on others. I might change my mind. I don't know. I might just stick one of these journal cards I've found like that and be like, hey, presto, we've got a pocket. I don't know. I'm a woman. I change my mind often. So I will just pause, glue those on, back in two ticks. There we go. That's those three stuck on nicely. Uh, this one, uh, the width, I've not really measured it. What I did is I got some... That were a scrap from a previous project. I just trimmed it down to the right height, six and three quarters, and then I had that piece left over and it fit under. So, to be honest, I could cut a bit more off that, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> it's quite often me, isn't it, that? As long as your pocket overlaps the other bit, you're okay. Now, quite often I put a thumb notch in, but I think that's going to spoil pattern, so I'm just not going to do it. So I'll stick that one on first. I want to get the right hand side up to there. So, oh, I did put a bit of, you know, my wide bit, my tape runner. Oh, don't say you've stopped working. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I again, uh, I weren't getting big chompy one out today. I've got my camera a bit lower down and I might knock it. 
So I'm just using my little one. They weren't quite good, these crafters companion ones. I should have mentioned these last time. I mean, if you don't want to buy a great big uh, roll and a great big, uh, yeah, ATG gun, they're quite a good alternative when you want some quick dry adhesive. It's, it's just one of them. You see me use a lot of things I never used to use. Because sometimes it's for speed. It's for speed so I can get more stuff done. Whee. If I weren't doing YouTube and I weren't selling stuff on Etsy, I'd just use the cheapest thing I could possibly get that did job. And I still do now, but also factored into that decision is, is it cost effective? Considering how much time it'll take me to use it. I wanted things I've decided ain't worth my time sometimes is double sided tape because it takes me forever to get back enough. I mean, if you can get back enough double sided tape quicker, you might love it. I know Melina loves it over at Me Crafty Scrapper. She's got big talons and <laughs> she can get the backing off a lot easier than I can. Talons, it's like I'm trying to call her a witch or something, innit? No, Melina, you're not a witch if you're watching. You're a lovely lady. So, that's that. And I'm just going to pop that one on there and make it a pocket. So, glue three sides. Now I'm gluing three sides to make sure I don't glue wrong sides. I put my thumb on the side I don't want to glue. It's become habit now because I've glued wrong side on so many projects in the past. Eee. Good, I've got my bead glue nice and a nice fine line ready to glue my pocket on. I think my pocket might be a smidgen taller than that, but it doesn't matter. That looks good to me. So that's just one pocket there. Right, I don't know, I want to do something more intricate on there and I also, I'm going to put another little booklet on there. You know how I said last time this could be a journal or an ephemera holder? Well, I've decided to do a journal on that spine and a little ephemera holder with some pockets on there. Yeah? Well, I've not made that yet. We'll do that together. Right, here's my journal. I've not decided if I want to round corner no if I round corners you'll see all my pages poking out so that's not going to happen right that is just a piece of 12 by 12 paper it's 12 inches wide and what I did is I scored it I'll get my ruler here to refresh my memory on where I scored T ruler where are you there you are got you out ready well the first score is obviously the width of the journal which is four and seven eighths I've then scored again at nine and a nine and three quarters. Yeah. And then the little bit left over, I've just folded it to make a pocket. So I'll put that up on the screen rather than writing that down because you might have decided to make your journal slightly wider. Like I said, you could go up to five inches or slightly narrower. You could go down perhaps to just four and a half if you wanted to depends what else you're going to fill it with doesn't it i'll just give this a quick inking and i will show you what papers i've put in i've not gone throat fancy i've just grabbed some book pages i thought right this is gilded lily it's like i don't know if it's even it looks rather french to me i don't know that it's supposed to be I mean, a lot of phrases, I don't even know if they were true or said by these people, but to me, Marie Antoinette comes to mind. I couldn't even tell you what century that's in. My daughter will probably shake her head if she sees this video, because she's a history buff. Well, I probably know and I forgot. Do you know what I mean? That's me. <laughs> uh, I'm not putting a thumb notch in this pocket either. You don't always have to put thumb notches in, do you? It's not compulsory. I think I'll use a journal card to make a pocket on that uh, back page. So I'm just doing a light inking on this. I watched some of my video back and you can't even see ink on some parts, but it is there, I promise you. 
Right, I'll talk you through this. So my first page, I always make my first page like a smidgen smaller. Can you see how I've got the cover there? It's a smidgen smaller than uh, four and seven eighths. Yeah, and then I cut all my other pages in turn. I put them together, making sure each one fits inside that. So I picked that. It's a piece of that was half a sheet of ledger paper that were in my stash. I'd coffee dyed it, so that went in. I've grabbed a book. This is an embroidery book. I just I just like that. I thought it went well with this collection. So I've cut it down. You happen to still be able to read it, which I think is nice. I then grabbed, I had some big A3 papers that I'd tea dyed. A3 is like double A4 if you're in the States, double, double letter size basically. So the big sheets. I don't know what you call them there. So I then folded it to the width I wanted, which is just under the size of that again I pop it inside I'll show you how I do it right. so I'll, there you go I've cut it to the correct height I then pop it inside there and I make a fold then I will move that and I'll fold it over so I've got my flip out page then I'll fold the back one over exactly the same there we go and that was a piece of paper that happened to be in that embroidery book. Don't know where it came from, but I thought, that looks nice, put it in. I've now got half a sheet of music paper. I've done the height, six and three quarters again. You can see the width is not quite as wide, so that's not an issue. Then I cut another piece of um, coffee dyed paper. Yeah. I pop it inside again because as you get nearer the centre of this signature, this is what the block of papers is called, a signature, they need to be a little bit shorter. So I'll tell you how short that ended up being. That's four and five eighths, yeah? So that went in. Then I grabbed a piece of my vintage ledger that I bought, that I hoard. I do use it sparingly. It's like from 50s, it's not antique. It's got a lovely watermark in it of Britannia. I had to cut the top off though, but it cut off just lovely along the edge of that red line. So I like that. Then that's, you know how you get the end pages sometimes on books where there's no writing? That's just one of them. That's a piece of cream paper from... Uh, they're actually some exercise books I bought for my daughter. I bought the wrong line spacing, so they're getting chopped up for journals. Uh, this is a page from a history book. It happened to have a map of France on it. So that's gone in. That's the bottom half of that music paper. And that's gone in. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. I tend to make these usually between about ten and fifteen. I'll just play it by ear, see when it seems fat enough. And because we're then going to put some ephemera in, I think that is big enough. Right, I'll just glue down this pocket. But not with that. That doesn't glue stuff. Why did you pick that up? Really couldn't tell you. What's mad is I talk absolute rubbish. <laughs> my daughters know what I'm on about. I told my daughter to put onions in onion the other day when we went shopping away. So she dutifully took the onions out of the plastic bag they came in and put them in our canvas bag where we keep the onions. Yeah. <laughs> As she was doing it, I'm saying, you knew exactly what I meant, didn't you? And she's like, yeah, I'm used to you. Okay. I wonder how often I say things on YouTube and I've not even caught myself when I've said absolute rubbish, like telling you to ink things with a paper chopper or something like that. Anyhow. I think if you watch me often enough, you'll end up as mad as I am and you'll get what I mean. Right, so that's the little journal. I'm now going to put some holes in both those sides. Right, because this is a trifold, move that ruler out of the way, put lid on ink before you have a disaster and stick pin in your glue. Jeepers. I wonder I don't stab my finger. Right, so we're going to close it up. That's going to go there. We're going to have another journal there. But when we close it, it's going to have to flip over, isn't it? 
so I want to put my elastic holes to the right hand side on each spine you'll see what I mean when I put my holes in you will you'll see why if you don't get it now it'll all become clear right I'm using my corner chomper or any hole chomper puncher whatever you've got will do I'm using the big size hole which on this is 3 16th of an inch this is the we are memory keepers one I was thinking I know I'd said this junk journal are ideal for beginners but then I thought oh should I punch shells and then I thought if you're serious about junk journaling you, you're gonna have to have some kind of old punch I, I would consider this an essential right I've dialed that in to is that a quarter of an inch yeah so I'm gonna come in and punch a hole a quarter of an inch now it's going to that right hand side so to make sure I get them straight I'm still eyeballing this I'm gonna put a little dot there or a line even yeah let's put a line just so I know they're going to be the same amount over. Do you get me? We already know how far up they're going because we've set that to a quarter of an inch. If you don't have one with a gauge, measure up a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Right. So. And if you're using the uh, We Are Memory Keepers one, it, it just happens to be when the edge of that is at the edge of your paper. Right. You have to poke these out sometimes. They don't want to come out when you've chomped a chipboard. Go on, come out, mate. We don't need you in there. Off you pop. I'm being very careful not to knock camera because I've done that before a fair few times. You see what I mean? It's just up to the edge of paper. So that's that one. Get your eyelets, woman. Now, again, this is, again, my instinct was, ooh, I want some nice gold eyelets. I don't want the shiny gold, I want dull gold. And I didn't have any. So my first instinct is go on Amazon and buy some. Then I'm like, no, no. You've got all these other eyelets. Does it matter if they're not the perfect colour? No, it doesn't. So I'm just deciding what colour. I think I might use silver. I could use silver. I've got these that are like, they're slightly bigger. They still work with the We Are Memory Keepers tool, but they're slightly bigger. These ones are the proper We Are Memory Keepers ones. I do like them, but I'm getting low on them because they're a bit, they're a bit pricey. Oh, look at that one. I like that colour. Yeah, it's the same as colour I'd already got, I think. That's the colour I want to go with. It's like um it's like is it like a gunmetal? Are they even three different colours? I think they are. So that's how much it matters. I can't even tell what colour I'm getting out. My eyes aren't good enough to tell the difference between them. So do you know what? Use all different colours if you want. Ooh, I have no idea. Let's take that one back. They could be the same colour, they might be different. Right. And I'm going to pop those into these holes. Right, it can be tricky to find with your lace. There you go. You could do this before you put your lace on, but I think it makes your lace look really bumpy when it's over its string. And I quite like the look of it. That's why I like to have a colour that blends in. When I've needed cream in the past, I've thought ahead and coffee dyed or tea dyed some. But I didn't this time. I'm blaming, t I'm blaming teenage hormones again. <laughs> Whee. Ooh, I do like that. Look, this is why I do like the proper brand when I'm doing book covers. They are much nicer. Right. And I know someone's going to ask, the settings I've got it on are... I'm going to have to write these down. 
because I can't even see it. A, <laughs> A and two. Yes, so A, two. They have numbers, they have letters. Right, so that's that side. Put it right way up, woman. Right, and I'm going to put the book in. Yeah, that'll be perfect. So I'm using this string. I don't know where I got it from or when, so don't ask me. It's just, it's just a nice string. It's a nice colour. I've got loads of string. Loads of string, loads of twine. I don't think it matters which you use. I'm just seeing if I've got enough. I've gone one, two, three. I'm going to go four times the height of the book. And I've got enough to make a nice knot. And you can either knot it on the outside of the book or knot it on the centre of the journal. For now, I'm going to knot it on the outside of the book. I might change my mind later. Like I say. I haven't pre-planned all of what I'm doing on this. I'm making a lot of it up as I go along. Whee. I just thought it might look nice tied on the outside. Because it matches my lace so lovely. Can I even tie a knot today? I really don't know. Now if you've got elastic, it doesn't look so nice tied on the outside of the book. It's best to have it tied on inside of your journal. Because today I'm using string. Now this is when I would bring in the child labour. If I weren't on my own. I'd borrow a finger. <laughs> to put there. There we go. You can do it woman. I've probably got far more string than I need. But I'm the kind of person. I'd rather have a bit more than not quite enough. That's probably not very tight. Oh, I've done it. It's okay. So there we have it. Yeah. So if you look, the holes come up higher at the top and lower at the bottom. That's so that the string comes out at the perfect point for my little journal. Oh, I like that. The other advantage to binding like this is if you decide you want to change a page or take one out to decorate, you can. I could perhaps do that a bit tighter, but I may have to borrow a finger to do that or well I'll be able to tie it when I'm not trying to tie it so you can see it right so can you see now when I close that book up yeah I'll, sh I'll show you upside down like that so the holes are there on that side and on this side I'm going to put them there so when it's closed up that's the space that the other little ephemera folio is going to take up i hope that makes sense so i'm going to go ahead and punch my holes and do my eyelets before we make the folder so i'm not even going to bother measuring it this time i'm just moving the side of my chomper up to the edge of the paper there's one but before i turn it i'll also put my eyelet in Can I even see to do it? Yeah, of course I can. I'm just pretending to be blind. There we go. And I'll turn it round and chomp and do my eyelet. Put it right way up, woman. I shouldn't have done it that way. I confused my brain. My brain were like, what's she doing? Don't want to come out, but we don't need to chomp another roll yet. I thought that was my eyelet then. Eyelet, where have you gone? I've just knocked it into next week. There we go. Da -da. That can go there. So I think you'll agree. I like the look of the eyelets. Like that. And that's the other one. So. That will close over there like that. And that. Da -da. I'm liking this so far. So. 
that's our pocket done. I'm just going to stick some in it so it doesn't look so bland. Now, um, haha, I've come across. I didn't know if I had any of these left. These are the journal cards that went with this collection, the Graphic 45. Some are portrait, some are landscape. I like that one. A woman can never be overdressed. No, a woman can be overdressed, but never over elegant. So that's going to get popped in the fit perfectly. I promised, right, I promised someone that I would show some pictures of uh, one of these, a couple of these journals I've made before because I did one in this paper collection and I've totally forgot to print them off ready for a video. So what I'll do is I'll pop them up on my community tab on YouTube. So if you go to my homepage, you'll see underneath it'll say videos, community, about, channels, click community. And then you will see those posts. And I know I've had a few people ask how you see those when I've mentioned them. Right, I'm going to grab some paper. I'm going to also refresh my tea, get another throat sweet. I'll be back in two ticks. I'm back again. I keep coming and going, don't I? So, what I've done now is I've cut basically another piece the same size as the journal was. Which is six and a half high. By, was it nine and I forgot how wide it were again nine and three quarters wide and then I've scored it in the middle and then I did the same to another piece but then after I'd done that I just cut a smidgen off top and a smidgen off side because that's going to go inside like that and we didn't want it sticking out top or side we wanted it to look nice when it was folded up yeah, and also it puts less pressure on those papers at top when they're fastened in with a string. Right, the other thing I've done, I have a couple of sheets like this. I've also I've zoomed out a bit as well so you can see more in that Graphic 45 collection I'm using. And I've cut it up into strips like so. Because I can then use these for pockets. Yeah? I don't know which ones I'm using, but I'll tell you the size at ones I'm going to land on. Right, so this is going to be the first page. So we'll have pockets there, 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 etc. You get the idea. I don't have to say there, there 26 more times. <laughs> I've chosen papers where they're a bit plain. Yeah, they're not completely plain, but the monochrome, is that what we call it when it's just the two colours? I don't know. So I do like those people. Do they look better on that or do they look better on that? Or do they look better on that? I don't know. I think they might look better on that. So I think I'm going to save my people for the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'll pop it on. I'm going to put them right up to the corner there and just show to the crease there. So I'll mark these with my pencil to know where to cut them rather than uh, measuring it and getting it wrong. I'll measure it as I cut it to know how high to do my top pocket, if that makes any sense at all. And it ends up being, see, yeah, it's like four and three quarters. There we go. So that's going to be my bottom pocket. I'm going to put people on there the same. I'm going to cut from that end so that I'll have a half person in the middle again but I'll have a full person on edge. Does that make sense? So four and three quarters that wants to be. Yeah, so that's going to go there. Then I want two more pockets at top. I mean, if you just want to put full size tags in these, stop there. That's all you need to do. I mean, you might decide you want to put two um, journals in your trifold that would be fine just deciding which I want on here oh, I think I like that one I don't know if that's upside down or no I haven't got a clue I haven't got a clue no I think it's that way in it so I'll cut two more of these at four and what did we say four and three quarters But again, these measurements are all dependent on how wide you've made your book. If you've not made it the same width as me. But rather than telling you measurements here, I'm showing you how I measure. 
so then it will work for any size project you're doing a lot of people have said this looks these look like lap books this looks like a lap book you could do the exact same thing with three pieces of letter size card or a4 card it would work right there we go i'm not putting thumb notches in again I think that's just the uh oh i forgot i was lightly inking i went a bit mad there that's that's me when i get talking Do -do. it's on it one in middle lightly ink woman lightly we don't want it to look like you've dragged it down pit will you coal mine that is if anyone doesn't know what a pit is i don't mean a fire pit oh yeah i suppose it'd look uh, black if it'd been dragged through a fire pit yeah i'll shut up now i've learnt over years when i start talking absolute twaddle it's time to shut up move conversation on Wee. so that's that that's that that's that I'll show you how I glue this one on. Well, you know how I glue it on. It's not rocket science, is it? I'll move that one from underneath because we don't want no accidents. Right, the bottom one is easy because I can line it up with bottom. Again, hold my thumb. Hold the edge. I don't want to glue with my thumb. I learnt that one through bitter experience. Right. So I've made it just short at crease so that when you fold it up your pockets aren't going to get away, see? If you've never come across anyone doing that before and wondered why. And have you noticed? I've kept corners again. Woohoo! So yeah, you can make these. I've said in the last part, did I? You can make them with vellum. Can't remember if I said it now. You can make these ephemeral dies with vellum, or acetate, or any plastic. Those little pockets that you put in ring binders are good, but I tend to think you need to be sewing for that. I'm not doing any sewing on this journal. I could. I've made journals like this where I have sewn before, but I didn't want to on this. I just, I wanted this to be more of a thing that, yeah, it's going to be lovely for anyone who is more experienced, but I wanted it to be achievable for beginners, if that makes any sense. I forgot which way around that would go in, blue at top, yeah. Now, this is where I consider now a tea ruler, a junk journal essential. It's just essential in this terrain, because <laughs> it will help me now. Straight, put them on straight. I mean, yeah, I know we don't have to be perfect all the time, but sometimes I just want to be. I really do. I think it depends on my mood, you know. I don't know, maybe a psychologist would have a field day with me. She'd be like, well, you feel you're losing control in life, so you have to control your scrapbooking. Yeah, that would be it, probably. I have had a bit... I'm saying no. My kids have had a stressful few weeks doing the mock exams, but yeah, that transfers, doesn't it? I've like I've not had them doing chores like I normally do. I've done all the chores for them, so yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, so I need a bit of control. Let me scrapbooking. Yeah, could be that. Yeah, I've cooked all meals. I've washed all pots. I've not made them do any. I thought for a few weeks while their exams are on, they've got enough on the plate. Right, and I'm going to stick that one on. Aha, uh -huh, I just nearly made a mistake, did I? Put your thumb there, woman. See how I nearly glued, glued wrong side? Wee. There we go. I think this kind of folio, if you're doing a journal as a gift for someone who were just beginning journaling, would be ideal because you could put all the little bits that they're going to use and stick on the pages in here for them. Right, so that's that. Now, I'm going to do exactly the same 
to those two pages and exactly the same to the back pages. I will keep you around for two ticks to help me choose, but I really don't think you need to see that again. I want this let them eat, let them eat cake. Yeah. Oh, I can just fit two let them eat cakes on each as well. That's perfect. So we're going to have let them eat cake there. And then at the top, I think I'll have the flowers. And what does this say? Uh, I'm the queen. Do you not understand? What part of I'm the queen? Oh, that's it. What part of I'm the queen do you not understand? I'm going to say that to kids when they're not behaving. What part of I'm the queen do you not understand? <laughs> so and that's going to go there. So on the back page, I may use... Yeah, that one and that one. Yeah. So I'll be back in two ticks with that all done and we'll fasten it in the book and we'll do something on that back page. And that's that done. So as you can see, I've put my pockets on there. I've got pockets there and pockets there. So that's plenty of pockets to put lots of little bits of ephemera in. I've just put some off cuts from these things I've used for pockets in there just to show you. Right, well also, if you look, perhaps take another eighth of an inch off that, yeah? Make it, rather than making it a sixteenth to an eighth narrower than your cover page, if you don't want it sticking out at all, make it a quarter of an inch less. So we cut that to four and seven eighths. Maybe do your inner one four and five eighths. I'm going to leave it and just about live with it. It's just about flush, but it sticks out a smidge in there. Well, I can live with it. That's when you only have it an eighth of an inch narrower. Yeah, it's the bulk of all this there. I didn't think it would bulk it out that much, but it has. But I'm quite happy with it. I can live with that. Right, let's tie it into the book. And have a look see. Oh, I love it. Yummy. Yummy. I'm quite liking this. Get your string out, woman. Four times the length of the book were good. So one, two, three, four. And here we go. I think it's pretty cute. Because I've paused. Well, yeah, paused. A couple of times I stopped instead of pausing. So I've filmed the video in chunks which I'm going to have to join together. So I'm not sure how long we've been going. Right. Tie that. Yeah, I did retie the first one. Oh, don't squash your gel, you silly woman. <laughs> oh, Lord, what am I like? Yeah, if I laid it face down like that, I found it easier to get a nice tight knot. Which anyone we offered Rain would have probably known that first place, wouldn't they? Because then I've got a spare finger that I'm not using to tie my bow. There you go. No child fingers required. Did it all with my own. Whew. It's upside down. What, what on earth are you doing, woman? What are you doing? Right. So that's that one. That's that one. Right. So this is how you would have it when you close the book, yeah? We've got our ephemera holder there, we've got our journal there. So you'd close that, close that. Then in the top you can see you've got, it's like having a journal with a signature either side if you choose to put two signatures in, yeah? So there we go. Then you'd flip that back, you've got your two books. So I think what I'll do is I will leave doing something on this back pocket yeah and i'll do that in another video it will be the last video i'll call it gilding the lily yeah so we'll just be gilding lily next time we've done the little journal um yeah i also need to get a pocket on there i think it's going to turn this into an awfully long video if i carry on doing the rest do you know i like those there i really do quite like it mm. oh I wonder if we could somehow turn that into the cloak. That's a good idea, Julie. You could somehow turn that 
into the actual closure. I was going to punch another hole there for a closure. I don't know, I might have changed my mind by tomorrow. You're going to have to wait and see, aren't you? Yeah? So I will get the next video up. It will be Wednesday or Thursday. Depends how I trot on tomorrow because I've got a few appointments. But yeah, there will only be one more video and we'll call it Gilding the Lily. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. I've had some really positive feedback so far on this one. But yeah, I'm quite happy with it. And I will put those other photos of the journals I've made before using this method on my community tab. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.